Civil Security meeting today over the killing of uh, two Ghanaians by some Chinese miners. And also, Alfred Agreshiwoyome has lost uh, an appeal that he filed in court. We'll also have some wellness and some briefs coming up. Stay with us. Okay, now to our first story. Some traders affected by the weekend fire at the Cantamanto market hit the street, have hit the streets to register their displeasure at a decision by the Accra Metropolitan Assembly to relocate them to the pedestrian shopping mall at Odorna. They claim there is no space at Odorna since they have all been allocated to some traders. The Accra Metropolitan Assembly had indicated after the weekend fire at Cantamanto that affected traders would be temporarily relocated to Odorna whilst the Cantamanto market is reconstructed. But it appears that decision might not hold. Efforts by some affected traders from the Cantamanto market to secure shares at the pedestrian shopping mall this morning proved futile as they were told all the shares had been given out. <laughs> But some traders here are asking the authorities in charge of the market to allow the affected traders to take over the unoccupied sheds. So the leaders for write their names, then AMA bring them for here. When they come, the shares there, there. Then the leaders share the shares for them because they put content they are not using. Traders at the Odona market are also appealing to the AMA to construct drains in the market to ease the flooding which occurs when it rains. Meanwhile, at the Cantamanto market, waste management company Zoom Lion was busy clearing the debris. Joy news gathered, structures not affected by the weekend's blaze have also been pulled down. The site of the bent market has however become a fertile ground for scrap dealers who are gathering pieces of scrap and hawkers while also carrying debris for a fee. Let's start with the issues of markets because the Kumasi market, which got banned last year, is about to be given a facelift. According to the Kumasi Metropolitan Engineer, the construction will be carried out in three phases, including the construction of drainage, sewer collection and road adjustment. A Brazilian construction firm has been awarded the contract to reconstruct the market. Okay, so the, the, this were the project design of the Kumase, the new Kumase uh, market that will be constructed. But let's move on now. The Chinese government has admitted its failure uh, to prevent its nationals from illegally traveling to Ghana. According to the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, Alhaji Inusa Fuseni, the Chinese government was alarmed by the various reports of illegal mining activities being perpetrated by its nationals in Ghana. The government noted that some Chinese nationals had been designated to investigate the matter, but uh, because of the reports emanating from Ghana and the media, the Chinese government directed its ambassador to engage with us. Indeed, the Chinese ambassador lamented its inability to prevent its people from entering Ghana. 
according to the minister, the Chinese themselves were unable to detect the visas were genuine and which were, were unable to detect which visas were genuine and which were fake. It requires collaboration between Ghana and China, working with our various embassies and foreign ministries, and that is being done. Some Chinese nationals in the country are involved in illegal Galamse activities and whose activities have resulted in several clashes across the country and the destruction of various natural water bodies. And still staying with that, uh, the Minister for Land and Natural Resources has ordered the arrest of two Americans filming themselves in Ghana as they engaged in illegal small-scale mining in Romaso in the Ashanti region. The reality documentary dubbed Django Gold has been has become a popular TV series on the Discovery Channel on DSTV. It depicts several brutalities meted out to farmers in the remote community by the illegal miners from the US, from the US state of Utah. In one of the scenes, a local Ghanaian farmer who protested the destruction of his cocoa farm is seen being strangled till he passed out by one of the Americans. Lands and Natural Resources Minister Inusa Fuseni said he has been given preliminary briefing on the matter. According to the minister, the Association of Small Scale Miners in the area has been to his outfit to raise concerns about the issue. He said the chairman of the association informed him the Americans who had come to lodge at his hotel informed him, the chairman, they got approval from higher authorities, but they could not show proof for that. The minister stressed nobody who is a non ghanaian is permitted by law to engage in small-scale mining. He stated that the two Americans will be tracked down and arrested. Join us as learns that officials of the Information Ministry are looking into how the two Americans came to start filming the series in Ghana. Well, now to some security issues. The country's security chiefs will today hold a high-level meeting at the Flagstaff House to review the security situation in the country. The meeting will tackle the various developments on the security front and any potential threat. This comes in the wake of what police say is a relatively secure period with a reduction in crime rates. There has, however, been a number of incidences, including the serious fire outbreaks, Today's security review meeting will tackle the various developments on the security front as well as potential threats. In attendance will be the Chief of Defence Staff and his service commanders, the Inspector General of Police, the Director General of the Ghana Prison Service, the Director of Immigration and the Chief Fire Officer. The Chief of Staff Prosper Bani and the National Security Coordinator, Lieutenant Colonel Larry Gwevlulate, retired, will also be present. Now let's get on to the health front. Nurses and midwives of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital are threatening to withdraw their services within a week. They demonstrated on Thursday in demand for better conditions of service. The threat comes just days after doctors returned from a month-long strike. <laughs> The nurses and midwives' concerns include the non-payment of accumulated salaries, risk allowance, motivation packages and end-of-service benefits. According to the group who demonstrated on Thursday, their services at the hospital have not been paid for the past one year. They have therefore given the hospital management one week to address their concerns or suffer the consequences of their next line of action. Convener of the demonstration who doubles as spokesperson for the Kolibu Teaching Hospital chapter of the Ghana Registered Nurses Association, and Sani Joseph said the action is just the beginning. You to reintroduce the motivation beginning. package, yes. either to pay us monthly, yes. but where abruptly stopped. Currently, we are being overwhelmed with the task of teaching so many students from various institutions, both public and private. Yes. We are very much aware that the private institutions pay the hospital for sending their students yeah. clinical training. Yes. Where is the money? 
Secondly, we have the adult tax of attending to so many patients to which we eventually become overburdened. He lamented that the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, which is the country's major health referral center, has no well-defined health care policy Even though we for act as a of the pivot of the hospital, our access to health in the relations. hospital is only limited to the benefits provided by the National Health Insurance. Yes. Sadly though, before we assess specialist care in the hospital, we need to get referral from the polyclinic where we join the queue yes. just as the general public. Yes. Very embarrassing. Ali yes. Dantani thus challenged management of the hospital to develop a health care policy that will cover their health needs. He further advocated for the appointment of principal nursing officers to the ranks of deputy directors of nursing services. The deputy director I'm very of the about the way you have presented your points. Some of them are just the saying, you don't only really cover you, the nurses say no. The issue of health care for staff covers everybody. Yes. It could be you. Yes. Or it could be me. Yes. Yes. Even the auto hotels themselves have had the chance to say it. So I'm very grateful that the Andrews are putting this forward. I am fine about it. I can't give you assurance of other things you have raised, but I can assure you that this government will surely get to management and it will be discussed either today or tomorrow, at 9 o'clock tomorrow. I give you the assurance you will surely hear from us. Let's still stay within the health uh, sector. If you are alive today, you'd probably want to thank the midwife who assisted your mother during delivery. This is because midwives play a vital role in supporting women throughout their pregnancies, as well as managing complications at birth. Experts in maternal health are, however, worried about the shortfall in the number of this core group of health workers. They suggest that if all Ghanaian women had access to the services provided by midwives, then the lives of up to 2,000 mothers and 15,500 babies could be saved by 2015. So ahead of the celebration of Mother's Day, Joy News uh, highlights the important roles midwives play in our society. For many people across the world, the term midwife brings to mind only one thing, child delivery. But there is more to what midwives do than just helping pregnant women deliver their babies. Theresa is a midwife at one of the maternal clinics in Accra. We met her giving this group of women advice on postnatal care. Ella Hansen Owu is a chief midwife. She explains the midwife's job does not end in the delivery room. Any pregnant woman expects to take a live baby home. So during the course of the pregnancy, a lot of education go on. During the delivery, we have our emergency parts ready. If you come here and, and the turn is maybe you have just started, we will admit you. We have a lying in ward or a first stage room that you will lie. And then we will tell you what to do. When you are getting the pains, you will do breathing exercise which has been taught already at the antenatal clinic. So it is not that moment that we are going to tell you what to do. Because at that time, nothing you will tell the pregnant woman and she will do it. And we midwives too, will have to check if the baby is breathing. So we check the fetal heart rate of the baby. And then we time the contractions. The contractions are the pains that the woman is feeling before the baby will come out. So we check that one too and see if it is normal. It is corresponding with the dilatation of the uterus. If everything goes well and the labor lasts around 12 hours to 16 for the one who has not delivered before, and one, the person who has delivered before, hers is shorter, so they don't go through that. But there are people too that get precipitate labor, and the precipitate labor is those who just start the labor 
and then within two hours, they have delivered. All we want is a happy mother and a live baby. So we put in our possible best, and we do all that we can, and we encourage you to do the right thing. And the, the contractions end? are coming more severely, and there is no dilatation. Then you will see that there is a problem. So if you are in a place, a small clinic like ours, where there is no doctor, quickly you have to put in some interventions. You will set your IV line, you do whatever you are supposed to do. You will inform the hospital that you are referring to, that you are bringing such a case. They will be prepared for you. If you don't have an ambulance, you will call a taxi driver. Put this patient in. The one who is accompanying the patient to the hospital will be holding the drip because there is nowhere to hang the drip in the taxi. But like every practitioner in the area of healthcare, mortality is inevitable. But Ella says, as midwives, they are extra careful in protecting the lives of their patients, since their greatest joy is to see both baby and mother healthy after delivery. Midwife, I'm always happy when at the end of the nine months, we get a live baby. The mother, the mother that one, A, hey, God has given you one mark in heaven because you have saved one soul. That is according to the midwife's Bible. Okay. So we are always, because we don't want any woman to die through childbirth. No woman should die through childbirth. Eh? It makes the home, I don't know. If you don't take care, they will even neglect the baby. Because certain tribes think, not that they think, it is there. That when a woman is about, goes to deliver and she loses her life, it is the fault of the baby. So they then neglect this baby. And I have got one before. I even took that baby to my house. Ideally, that should be the case. But some midwives have been criticized for mistreating pregnant women. But the chief midwife says midwifery is a calling which requires a special skill, patience. In fact, some people have packed feces in the rectum. That one will come out first. And you, the midwife, you have to deal with that before you go to the actual baby because you wouldn't want, you won't like to deliver a baby into such a messy situation. So if you don't have patience, how can you do it? Somebody will be throwing her legs in the air. When the pain starts, instead of her to do what you are telling her to do, hey, as for this pain, she can't stand it. So she'll be throwing her legs in the air. And if you don't take care, she may even hit you with the leg, if you don't have patience, you will be here. So midwives need a lot of patience. Nursing and midwifery is a calling. If you haven't been called and you find yourself there, please change your attitude. Robert Akwe, who apparently delivered a baby boy this dawn, attests to this fact. You know, when you are in labor, I think the first stage is that you need a first care. If you don't get the first care, then there, there will be problems. So I think the initial care that they give to you so that you go through the process later and come out is very, very important. And that is what you will get here. Like when I got here, if I was not giving, because I got here, it was not even up to 15 minutes and I delivered. So you can imagine when you have not gotten that initial care, then there, there will be problems. If it's not them, if it's not midwives, then getting newborn babies into the world will be a problem. And that, as I say, the beginning is very, very important. To get it right is very important. So whichever way you look at it, midwives are essential in preserving lives and most importantly, attaining the Millennium Development Goal targets four and five. Well, we say are you cool to all the midwives and of course happy Mother's Day in advance to them as well as we celebrate our mothers this weekend. But away from that, the financial division of the Fast Track Higher Court has issued a one-week ultimatum to the National Labour Commission that NLC, the Ghana Medical Association, GMA, and the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, FWSC, to agree on a payment schedule on the conversion difference uh, for doctors. 
That was after the court had refused a one-month request by the NLC for the GMA and FWSC to agree on the schedule for payment. According to the court, presided over by Justice John Ajet Nassam, the one-month directive issued by the NLC for the parties to agree on a payment schedule to make for an amicable solution of the doctor's grievances was too long and therefore directed the parties to endeavor to do so within a week, failure of which the FWSC would be cited for contempt. The GMA last Tuesday announced an end to a strike by its members, which lasted almost one month. Justice Ajet Nassam said the court needed the total commitment of the members of the GMA to their work and that he would personally conduct investigations to verify whether or not they had completely called off their strike. And still staying with the legal uh, matters, legal team of the new Patriotic Party's 2012 presidential candidate Nana Ikufu Ado and two others are appealing to accounting firm KPMG to undertake auditing of pink sheets for free. The Supreme Court on Thursday selected the firm to conduct an audit into the over 11,000 pink sheets submitted by the petitioners after the respondents told the court what they had received falls far below what the petitioners have listed in their affidavits. Spokesperson for the petitioners' legal team, Yabwa Benga Samwa, told Joy News KPMG should consider their selection to audit the evidence as a corporate social responsibility. He said even if the firm cannot give out the fee entirely, it should reduce the cost considerably because it goes to improve democracy. According to Yabwa Benga Samwa, KPMG stands to gain from the exercise. Meanwhile, Joy News has learned it could cost about $100,000 for an audit to be carried out on the pink sheets exhibit by KPMG. Joy News sources have hinted the cost is expected to cover what could be described as the high-risk nature of the audit and the personnel required to carry out the work. And still in the courts, the Court of Appeal has upheld the decision of the Commercial Court to allow the state to introduce evidence of fraud in the payment of 51.2 million Ghana cities to a businessman, Alfred Agbeshi Woyome. Woyome appealed against the Commercial Court's February 29, 2012 decision to allow the state to introduce evidence of fraud on the grounds that the trial judge erred in law in granting the state the permission almost two years after the state had filed a suit to retrieve the money paid Wyoming. The state, on July 20, 2010, filed an application claiming that an agreement it reached with Wyoming regarding the payment of 51.2 million Ghana cities was a mistake. But according to Wyoming, the state went to sleep until January 16, 2012, when it filed a motion on notice for leave to amend uh, by substitution the amended writ of summons and the accompanying amended statement of claim. In a unanimous decision yesterday, the court presided over by Justice S. E. Kan Kanyoke said the agreement reached with Wyoming over the payment of 51.2 million Ghana cities was not sacrosanct and could be set aside. The other panel members of the court were Justice E.K. Aibi and Mrs. Justice Gertrude Tokonu. The court held, among other things, that the amendment could be done once it was not going to bring injustice to the other party. This is the Midday Brief live from our studios here in Kokomemli. We'll be right back with some more stories. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Ayinsu Cassava Farmers Association, ACFA, has praised the government of Ghana for signing an agreement for the exportation of cassava chips from the country to China. Under the agreement, more than 1 million metric tons of cassava chips would be exported to China in the next five years. George Dodd, chairman of the association, made the commendation in an interview with the Ghana News Agency at Aguna Kwanyako in the central region. He said the initiative would motivate Ghanaian cassava growers to increase their produce for export. According to him, the ACFA would encourage its members to liaise with the Ministry of Food and Agriculture to expand their farms and increase production. He said the association would buy cassava chips from all the 10 regions in the country at affordable prices for export. George Dodd appealed to cassava growers to contact the office of the association at Aguna Kwanyako for further information.
Deputy Minister of Finance Kassil Atuforsen says government will redouble efforts to assist SMEs access the capital market. Speaking at Ghana's first capital market conference in Accra, he assured of government's commitment to restructure the economy for businesses to acquire the needed incentives for growth. The growth of the economy is heavily dependent on how easily businesses are able to raise equity and debt to fuel the expansion. A robust capital market is therefore critical for any growing economy. The first capital market conference brought together economic policy makers, business leaders and operators to constructively dialogue on strengthening the subsector. Without sound macroeconomic policies as an anchor for growth, investors will find alternative destinations for their capital. Even as our economic policy makers attend to inflation, exchange rates, interest rate policy, and the other drivers of economic activity, they must also consult market regulators to stay current with the investor trends and concerns. Government reiterated this commitment to support the capital market and make it more supportive of the private sector. This is how many multinational companies have grown from one-man family-owned businesses into big multinational companies. These businesses, while small, assess capital from the capital market, improve their corporate governance standards, and acquire new skills and better management to grow. This is generally not so in Ghana, either because we did not know how to do it, or we are culturally bound not to take risks and share benefit with others. The government would do its best to restructure the economy such that the needed infrastructure would provide for risk takers towards the development of a more productive and competitive economy. Chairman of the National Development and Planning Commission, Paul Victor Bing, says the economic infrastructure must be in place for the market to thrive. Our infrastructure didn't change from that of a least developing economy to a middle income economy because we've been proclaimed so. We still lack a fair, a fair share of motorable or weather roads that can become an, in, in, uh, an input into a competitive economy. And our power sector is still a challenge in terms of adequacy and reliability. So I'm just saying this to show us the burden of, of projects, of, of activities that we must execute in our economy to be able to lift ourselves up, consolidate, expand the economy, and to diversify it. Chairman of the National Development and Planning Commission, Paul Victor Bing, says the economic infrastructure must be in place for the market to thrive. The outcome of the two-day conference will be made available to government to formulate the appropriate policies to develop the capital market and make it more relevant to the needs of the economy. Well, I was just looking through our Facebook page and some of you have started uh, posting your comments on some of the stories on this bulletin so far. You can also do the same. It's facebook.com slash uh, join news. So you can just log on there and uh, post your comments. We'll get to read them in a bit. But first, industry players in the bulk petroleum industry have suggested a complete removal of subsidies on petroleum products to enable them access ready funds in the importation and distribution of petroleum products. The bulk distributors argue the scrapping of the subsidies is critical, especially because government does not promptly honor payments for subsidies granted government between January and March this year is said to have incurred over 200 million Ghana cities to subsidize petroleum products. The meeting attracted industry players in both the downstream and upstream subsectors. Chief Inspector at the NPA, Esther Anku, underscored the important role of the bulk distribution oil companies and indicated their business has been critical to the availability of fuel in the country. Now, the way forward uh, is, I've I've, I'm going to mention a few of them, is to accelerate the deregulation of the downstream industry. We started this process in 2005. We have uh, achieved some, um, chalked some milestones, but we still haven't reached yet. We still haven't reached where we want to get to yet. So we would have to accelerate the deregulation. And then, for instance, 
uh, one of the targets is to have price liberalization. When you import, you are free to set your price. She suggested some critical indicators for the growth and business sustainability of the BDCs. The NPA chief executive said the removal of subsidies will make the industry more competitive, but also advocated for hedging as a national policy. The price of petrol today is two cities and five pesos, based on an international price of petrol of let's say $850 per metric ton and an exchange rate of 1.9. And the government decides that, you know, I wouldn't mind passing on the price to the consumer if prices go to about two CDs and 10 pesos. I will let the consumer continue paying for it. And if the price goes below two CDs and five pesos, we pass it on to the consumer. So the government is saying that we will pass on the price to the consumer up to, let's say, two CDs and 10 pesos. After two CDs and 10 pesos, I, the government, I am not comfortable in passing on the price to the consumer because I, the government, believe that it could affect other economic drivers. President Mahama has commissioned Ghana's first grid-connected solar energy plant, which has the capacity to provide electricity for the entire Navrongo. The president is meanwhile directing the Ministry of Energy to expedite work on exploring other renewable energy avenues to bring the current load management to a complete halt and for a future devoid of any such occurrence. The chiefs and people of Pungu, where the plant is situated, and those from surrounding communities throng the ceremonial grounds to be a part of the historic commissioning. The chief executive officer of the Volta River Authority, Kwe Kwawache, stressed the need to monetize waste by converting it into energy. When technologies are becoming increasingly affordable and approaching what we call great parity, while two megawatts is a modest start, it paves the way for the rapid addition of new solar capacity in the coming years. Finally, it signifies that the Volta River Authority remains close to its roots after harnessing its very first renewable hydroelectric power 50 years ago. The Volta River Authority is therefore pleased to take this first step in combating this real global threat. In the years to come, we expect to significantly expand our footprint in the delivery of solar, wind and biomass. Energy Minister Amako Fibua hinted that more of such will soon be rolled out. To begin with, we have distributed solar system to rural public institutions such as clinics, schools and security outposts. Households in deprived of grid communities in over 80 districts nationwide have also benefited from this package. Together with VRA, we have initiated a financing arrangement with KF of Germany to fund the development for another 8 to 10 megawatt solar plant right here in this region. President John Mahama was particular about the abuse of energy in the country, which he noted affects the entire energy sector adversely. The president reiterated his commitment to ending the load management program has not waned. In emergency measures that I outlined to deal with a crisis in the short term, we resolve to fast track and bring on stream ongoing power projects across the country. As a result of these emergency measures, we quickly commissioned the T3 Abwaze plant into service, and that added another 130 megawatts into the national grid. Only last week, we switched on the first turbine of the Bui Generation Station, and we also commissioned a new substation in Kintampo. This activity brought into the national grid another 133 megawatts. While this has significantly ameliorated the impact of the load shedding exercise that we have been undergoing, it has not completely eliminated the power deficit that we currently face. The new solar plant was started in March last year and completed in February this year at the cost of 8 million US dollars. It comprises six photovoltaic arrays, 
covering 9.6 acres of land released by the chiefs of the area. Sunlight received in Pungu is said to be one of the highest in the country. Hence, the choice of place for the plant. There are ongoing arrangements for use of wind energy, which is cheaper, while negotiations are ongoing to replicate these renewable energy alternatives on a large scale across the country. Gifty and Dapia, Joy News. Okay, so from the Preston, now let's move to the First Lady, Lordina Mahama, who has appealed to the different professional groups and associations of midwives in the country to urgently tackle the problem of disunity among their ranks. Speaking at the launch of the uh, 22nd International Day of the Midwife in Wa, Lordina Mahama stated that although she doesn't begrudge them for the different associations they belong to, it is important they remained united and focused. Rafiq Salam sent in this report from Wa. The Day of the Midwife was established by the International Confederation of Midwives following suggestions and discussions with member associations in the late 1980s and launched in 1992. The aim of the day is to celebrate midwifery and to create awareness on the importance of the midwife's work. The Upper West Regional Minister, Dr. Efiem Avienso, posited that the well-being of every nation starts with the health of the people, and this can be achieved through the early intervention of the midwife, who, besides delivering newborns, also saves the life of the mother. The midwifery profession, though crucial in the health of the living system, is gradually becoming an endangered species, particularly in this region, where there are only 147 midwives with a population of, uh, of 729,000. That is in the, that's the, for 2012. That's the ratio of one is to 4,674. Sadly, over 75 percent of these midwives are about 45 years of age and will soon be retiring within the next 10 to 15 years. The president of the Ghana Registered Midwives Association, Joyce Jetwa, urged the different professional groups and associations of midwives to urgently tackle the problem of disunity among their ranks. We all have to put our strength on the wheel and play our individual roles to ensure better health outcomes for our mothers and babies. But disunity among us will not help us will not have a cause, for no divided army can win a battle. Our battle is difficult. There are a lot of players in the field, and only when we put our heads together, we will be able to produce the synergistic results needed at this crucial time. In a keynote address to launch the day, First Lady Lordina Mahama eulogized two of the country's midwives, Mariama Iseka and Magdalene Juliet Aqua, for bringing glory and honor to the country. The First Lady underscored the importance of the midwife in the Ghanaian society. In many remote areas, they are the only source of access to our food. This explains why in many communities, midwives are the most popular workers. Almost everybody recognizes them and know where they live. Midwives do not only assist with pregnancy and childbirth. They take care of family planning and provide care and nutritional support for newborns and their mothers. Some of the midwives were presented with awards for their meritorious service to the nation and humanity. Rafik Salam's report from WA. Okay, let me read quickly the comments you have sent us before we move to our next story. Uh, Kwame Ohini Champon says, uh, why should the government call for the arrest of the Americans? I think the Americans were just trying to show the world the poor leadership we have in Ghana. Why should the Chinese be allowed into small-scale mining? Can Ghanaians do the same in China? Uh, Bounty Benjamin says, the situation in Ghana now looks as if we live in no man's land. And the final one from Doland Kelly says, the Chinese are brought in as workers from their country. I stay near some of them. Some rich people in China bring them to work, and after some years, they are left to go into a business of their choice. So those were your comments uh, on Facebook. But on to some other story. Now, the Food and Drugs Authority is asking Ghanaians to be on the lookout for fake Coatem tablets. The one in which was contained in a statement issued by the authority said the fake drugs are already in circulation in Western and Central African countries. The packaging of the drugs are in English. 
one bears a falsified stamp of the Nigerian Med National Medicines Regulatory Agency and the other a falsified green leaf logo of the Affordable Medicine Facility Malaria Program. An ongoing post-market surveillance activity nationwide by the FDA has not yet as yet detected the presence of the said Coatem tablets on the Ghanaian market. Coatem is one of the most popular drugs prescribed by doctors for malaria patients. A statement signed by the Acting DCE Drugs Registration and Inspectorate Division of the Food and Drugs Board, uh, Food and Drugs Authority, beg your pardon, said Saneke warned the general public of fake Coatem tablets in circulation in some Western and Central African countries. It's about that time in the bulletin where we try to get you in shape and also keep you updated about events happening across the world of showbiz, sports and on the international front. But today I don't get to do that. Uh, my partner in crime is in the house. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I don't know my partner in crime. Uh, it depends on the crime, Smart. Oh, the crime is to inform our, our viewers. <laughs> and it's or a you crime? Want a, or you want a different crime? Um, let's stick with informing that, the viewers better. for now. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm ready for any bank robberies or anything of the sort. Okay, so what do you have for us? We have wellness mm. and we're talking about a rather interesting, embarrassing, again I say interesting, you need to read what I have on the sheets but seeing as you can't and I can, we'll go to wellness just a bit. Now, nobody wants to talk about it, but all of us do it, and some of us even do it as much as 30 times in a day. Some people are proud of their ability to do it, and others go to great lengths to contain it. Still, as I said, every single one of us does it. Are you wondering what I'm talking about? Breaking wind. Flatulence. It's an embarrassing gastrointestinal phenomenon that we all face daily. And today we have Professor Alex Dodu to throw some light on this situation. In a Ghanaian setting, it is still interesting to note that when an adult farts, it's blamed on the child because no adult feels comfortable to own up to the act. Flatulence, also known as passing wind, is a normal biological process, but is a major source of embarrassment when it happens in public. It tends to create an awkward situation for people. People can pass wind only a few times a day, others a lot more, but the average is said to be about 15 times a day. When someone farts, it is often laughed at, but excessive flatulence can be embarrassing and make you feel uncomfortable around people when it is released under pressure, creating a sound accompanied by a foul smell. Someone says, oh, when I break wing, it smells. Of course it's supposed to smell. It's, you know, it contains so many different types of gases. Some of the gases actually are inflammable. That is why when you are having surgery, they, say they cleanse your stomach so that the, the gas will not cause, cause trouble, which is not expected. For most people, they don't like the smell. But if you eat eggs or beans, what do you expect? You're going to have it. There's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing. It's just a problem, like I said, if you are in the midst of your friends and you want to do it silently, and unfortunately, yes, it's silent, and yet the smell is so bad, then you feel very uncomfortable. A lot of pillows, so that when you sleep, things go down this way rather than come up that way. Because sometimes, if you're not lucky, the belching can be accompanied with a little bit of vomiting or a small regurgitation of the food in your stomach. Exercise cures it. Then they have the so-called probiotics, you know, these are yeast producing things. I mean, these probiotic cream, um, yogurt and other things, they also help a lot. They mop up the excess gas. But they are medicines, simple, what we call antacids. Magnesium and all those antacids can also help. Anything containing alginates will help. If it's serious, we might give you medicine, some of which are used to treat ulcer to deal with the stomach issue. Bear in mind, the flatulence is a normal biological process. 
Doing it excessively or not doing it at all is a problem, but one would have to seek medical attention in both situations. wondering why I'm still laughing is because Smart just told me what he's having for lunch. He's having Gary and Bean's egg and washing it down with a bottle of beer. Hmm. Why don't we move on to something that smells a little more pleasant? It's brought to us by Tigo. That's right. It's time for... Lionel Messi's life is to be made into a film after a Los Angeles production company bought the rights to a biography of the Barcelona star. The film is set to focus on Messi's boyhood in Argentina and treatment for growth hormone deficiency before depicting his on-field successes. Messi, 25, has won the Ballon d'Or, awarded to the world's best player for the last four years. Epic Pictures Group hopes to finish the film in time for the 2014 World Cup. The distribution of the film has yet to be decided, with Epic Pictures still holding talks with writers and directors about the project. The film will be based on Luca Cairoli's book, Messi, which features interviews with the players